This video will follow the quick start guide for UK Pay Payroll using Stansoft. You can find a link for that guide in the description below. Stansoft Pay As You Earn Payroll is recognized by HM Revenue and Customs for real-time information RTI submissions. We will start by installing the software. I'm doing this as the root user, but if you're not root, you'll need to prefix your installation commands with the sudo command, as I've shown here. This will download the RPM. Select Y to install it. Installation is completed. Now we must run the installation script located here. Press enter to accept the database to use. The default is one. Then to run the program, you'll run that script that is listed as user Stansoft. Stansoft is the super user of the menu system, so you'll have access to all menu options. First, before we do that, we must set the UK date format, which can be found in the following location. You'll notice it's commented out here. We will highlight that. Exit out of that file. And that must be pasted into the Postgres local file. And we will paste that so our UK date format will be set. Save that file. Now when we launch the Stansoft menu, it will use the proper date format. So become user Stansoft. and launch the menu. Select System Management from the Master Menu. Then Postal Code Maintenance. And select Add. You can use the arrow keys to make your selection or you can use A as a hotkey to add it. And this is known as a ring menu on the top here. If you use the arrow keys, it keeps going around. So select Add. Enter our postal code. And you must add at least your company postcode because we'll need that when we enter your company information. And you can also add all the postcodes for each employee, or you can do that later when we enter the employees. County, state, and country codes can be left blank. Press escape to save, then exit. Select profit center maintenance. And we will add profit center number zero to the system. This is the company-wide profit center and is required. You can enter an address street if you want, but you must enter a zip code. We can enter the zip code or we can do control F to search for it. In tax group, enter PC for profit center. Profit center type is A for administrative. And then press escape to save. And enter on accept. Now that record has been saved. We'll exit out of that. Next, go into system parameters maintenance. Select find from the ring menu. Enter parameter number two, 
press escape will perform a search. Now we must change the value field by selecting change and enter in your company-wide profit center number which we just defined as zero. Press escape to save and exit. Next go into back out of this menu control C and go into general ledger. Period maintenance select add and add your series number. The series is your fiscal period so if your fiscal year is on the calendar year you can add the year number like 2022. If your fiscal year is not on a calendar year you can use something like FY23 or 22-23 for fiscal year 2023. And we'll say our fiscal period begins on April 1st. Press escape. Enter the number of days in this period, which is 30. And the first period has been entered. We can go ahead now and enter all 12 periods. Press escape to save that. You'll notice it automatically went to the next month so the dates are correct. Add again. The next month is populated in the date fields. And we'll just keep selecting add and escape until we get all 12 periods added. This way we'll only need to go into this program once a year to add new periods. Okay, so our first year all 12 periods have been added. Now go into Account Master Maintenance, select Add, and you can add your entire chart of accounts or at least add the listed accounts in the quick start guide. So we'll go ahead and add all of those accounts that are listed now. Our series is 22-23 which we just entered in period maintenance. Our first account is 1050. Our profit center is the company-wide profit center we added earlier. This will be a normal debit balance. The accounting group is current assets. And our description is cash in bank. And the clear to account is zero, meaning this account will not be cleared when the year-end period program is run. For all expense and income accounts, you'll use the retained earnings account, which we'll show you a little bit later once we get the retained earnings account entered. Press escape here to save and select add again and we'll just continue adding all the rest of the accounts. 4,000, normal credit balance, current liabilities group, National Insurance Payable Account, clear to a zero, escape to save. Forty thirty five student loan.
workplace pension. Clear to account of zero. Next is the common stock account. And its accounting group is capital stock. We'll name it common stock. Now, this is our retained earnings account. So the group will be retained earnings. Now, once we have our retained earnings account entered, we can enter income and expense accounts. Discounts earned account, which is in the other income group. And since this is an income account, the clear to account will be 49.9, which is our retained earnings account. So when the year end program is run to clear accounts, the income and expense accounts will be cleared to the retained earnings account. Next is our wages account, which is an expense account. So again, this will be cleared to the retained earnings account. And finally, we'll add national insurance expense account. Select Exit. Next, go into System Management. We have to back up to the Master Menu. Select System Management and Bank Maintenance. Select Add. And you can enter your actual information in here. Or for demonstration purposes, we're just going to enter 9999 for the bank account. Put a description in and a name. We'll use C for checking our profit center. And for cash in bank, accounts payable, and invoice discounts, those are general ledger accounts, which we defined earlier. So you can enter the number if you know it, or you can do control F and search, either by putting a description in or pressing enter will bring up all accounts. Select the one you want, press enter. And then select escape to save. System parameter maintenance. Select Find, and we need to find each of the parameters listed. The first one is 9000, press Escape. Select Change, and for the payroll locale, enter UK, press Escape. Select Find, enter 9009, press Escape. change. The last payment number issued by the system will put zero, which will make the first payment number one. Press escape. Find 5009. Escape. Change. And the default bank account number, which we defined as 9999, or you would use whatever bank account number you entered in the bank maintenance. Press escape to save that and exit.
select company maintenance, select add, and add your company name. You can add your address street also. Postal code is required, so we'll enter that. And you can also add phone and email address. Press escape, we'll save. Next, select the pay ring menu option and add in all of your employer pay details here. Everything that is appropriate for your company. Once that is entered, select escape to save that. And exit. Control C to back up to the master menu and go into payroll. Select earning maintenance. And you can enter in as many earning codes as you would like. You can also name the code anything you like except for the statutory maternity pay and the shared parental pay. Those have to be the codes listed in the guide and what I will show you here. We'll make our regular pay code one and that can be anything that you want to name it but we'll just use that. And we'll call that regular. The rate is one. Enter your general ledger account which is wages and you can control F here to search for the geo account if you didn't know the account number. Next code SMP for maternity pay rate of one. We'll also put that to the wages account in SHPP for shared Rental pay. Press escape to save those. You can also go into deduction maintenance and enter any deduction codes that you might have. We're not going to enter any now, so we'll control C to back out of that. Next, we will go into tax maintenance. All the tax codes are in the system, but we need to add the general ledger codes to them. So enter on find, type in HMRC for tax authority, and press escape. That will bring up all of the tax codes. The first is national insurance. Select change. And We'll need to enter a geo expense account and geo payable account. The field who pays designates whether the employee pays this or the company. It will be a C flag for company. If it's a company expense, there should be a general ledger account entered into the geo expense account as well as the payable account. The payable account is used for tracking the payment when you pay into HMRC. Since this is an employee payment, we will only enter the payable account for national insurance payable. Press escape to save that. Select next. Our next code is the employer national insurance and you'll see that the who pays flag is C for company. So for this, we'll need both an expense account so that this is expense, expense to the employer. And also the payable account. Press escape to save that. Select next and change. Again, this is a company expense. So we'll enter a company expense account and the payable account. Let's 
student loan is just charged to the employee, so we only need the payable account, which we defined as 4035 for student loan. So that general ledger account will contain all of the student loan deductions. Press escape to save. Our tax will be just a payable account. 4030 for pay payable. Forty thirty here also. And for workplace pension, since there is an employer portion to this, that would need the expense account. We will put that to wages and the payable account. Of 4037, which we defined as workplace pension. And this code is the employee share of the workplace pension. So that only needs the payable account to find 4037. Escape to save that. Next, we can enter employees into the system by selecting employee maintenance. Select add, enter the national insurance number. Profit center of zero, which we had defined earlier. Starting declaration will be B for only job. Start date will use April 1st. And press escape to bring you to the next screen. Pay type will enter S for salary and enter the salary rate. Normal hours worked. Pay group will be M for monthly or whatever pay group you want. Could be annual or weekly or any other group you have defined. Tax authority is HMRC. Tax code If the employee is paid on a week one, month one basis, enter a Y in this field. The national insurance category letter assigned to the employee. Enter Y if the employee is a director or N if not. Student loan can be plan one, two, four, or P for postgraduate. Enter Y or N if this employee should be enrolled into automatic enrollment for workplace pension. Press escape. We'll bring you to the last screen. Everything on this screen is optional, so we will just press escape. Select accept. And that employee has been added to the system. Next, we will process a payroll, and we will do that by selecting Payment Entry. Select Ring Menu Option Generate. You can enter an employee number if you want to select just certain employees. Otherwise, leave that blank to select all. Enter your pay period. And 
in your pay date. Press escape. And this has generated a payment for our employee. Select the earnings option and enter your earning code. 01 is the code we had defined for regular pay. The salary amount automatically comes into the amount field. You can change that if you want. Otherwise, we'll accept that by pressing escape. And you can see your taxes, student loan, and pension have all been calculated. If everything looks correct, select Exit. Select the Payment Selection option. Enter on Select. You can enter an employee number here, pay group, pay period, or pay date to define which records are selected. If you want to select all unprocessed pay, then you would just hit Escape. Select View, and here's the pay slip for the payment we just entered. You can also print, email, or save it as a file. Select on Exit. Next, choose Post. Answer yes or no to the question prompted. That gives us a message. One was posted. Next, select RTI for the real-time information. And select FPS for full payment submission. Press Escape. The Submit option and the data is now being sent to HMRC. And that gives us a message that it was completed successfully. Press enter on that and select exit. You can now select the history option and that will give you a list of all the submission history and you can see the one we just submitted has a success status. Control C to exit out of that. And select exit. And exit again back to the payroll menu. And this completes submission of a pay payroll in Stansoft.